So this is Poly Octavis, um, which is just a, a patch I've had on my workbench for a long time. Um, that is, you know, I mean, you're you're guessing it correctly. It's a Pog, uh, EHX Pog, sort of riff. Um, and the reason that I'm really releasing it, one is, I don't know, people might like it. Uh, you know, it's fun to play around with. Uh, but the other reason is that I wanted to test something out with firmware 1.13 related to volume swells, which I know a lot of people have worked on uh, and been maybe frustrated with the results or frustrated with the inconsistency. Um, and I think that one of the advantages of firmware 1.13 is uh, the way in which the envelopes can be re-triggered. And so I implemented that into this patch. Uh, pretty pleased with the results that I've gotten from it. Um, so just a quick rundown of the controls. There's a dry level up here. There's a low pass filter that's before the pitch shifting. Uh, there's an attack control for the uh, envelope. And there's a low pass filter. And then along the bottom are just your levels for various octaves in the pitch shifting configuration. The upper octaves are handled by pitch shifters. The lower octaves are handled by granular modules, which I think give a better result at that level. The high pass filter is prior to the pitch shifting uh, because it can help a little bit to cut out some of the low harmonics to get a smoother signal. Although I'm sure you can hear in the video, I'm sure you'll hear uh, when you play this patch that, you know, I mean, the, the, Particulars of pitch shifting in Zoya are pretty well documented. The, there's no need to add a vibrato wobble uh, control to this polyphonic uh, octave generator because it's there whether you want it or not. There's a modulated quality to the signal. Um, but, you know, I mean, that has its own sort of beauty. Uh, one thing I'll say about the attack control is that it uses a linearly controlled ADSR and it can go up to 15 seconds, which is a really long time. Um, probably longer than most of you will want to use it for. But I sort of thought, well, you know, if you're playing with like a, a keyboard or something like that where you can really do long sustained notes, that sort of range might be useful and, and it covers you know you just have to be careful dialing in the attack to get what you want but it covers the the basis for other sorts of attacks earlier in the travel um but real quickly i want to talk about this approach to uh, uh volume swells um envelope triggering so normally i advocate for envelope followers because I find onset detectors very finicky. Uh, but this is a case where I think the and onset detectors are crazy expensive. So this patch is really basic if you go into the guts of it. it these are the pitch shifting modules. These VCAs are the mixer. This is the high pass filter that, that precedes the pitch shifting. Uh, it was a late addition so it comes in a weird place. Um, you know, and then they go to this VCA where they're all joined together so that they can be affected by a single envelope. Um, and that goes to the low pass filter and then out. This is a mono patch from left to left. Uh, but there's also an onset detector. And the onset detector, I have the sensitivity turned all the way down because otherwise it just goes off all the time for me. Uh, I've starred this parameter if you want to adjust it to something that maybe suits you better. But the onset detector goes to 
both the input of the ADSR and the retrigger. And uh, the sustain is set to 100 or 1, uh, and the immediate release is set to off. So this is an envelope that once triggered will run its course. Um, and if we look at the output of the ADSR, there I triggered it by accident because again the onset detector is pretty finicky, but because we have the onset detector going into both the gate input and the retrigger input, uh, when the envelope is high, it will retrigger when it receives a signal at the retrigger input. Uh, even if there's a signal received at the gate input, prior to that, it, it would not. You'd need to send a separate, separate gate source uh, to retrigger. So, and then the output of the ADSR just goes into a multiplier uh, to get a more um, curved slope. Uh, so it, it goes in three times. Um, actually, we should look at the output of the multiplier instead of the ADSR. Right, so we can see it being triggered, but... Um, and so I think this combination of an onset detector and a, an, an ADSR with immediate release off gives a pretty like satisfying volume swell if you want it to trigger on every note. Um, if you want it to trigger in other ways, the envelope follower may be a better option, but still then this option to use the gate and retrigger at the same time uh, might be beneficial. So that's Polyoctavius and the way that it does volume swells. Um, you know, the onset detector and all the pitch shifting killed things. You can hear every now and then the VCA sort of rushing closed, and I could probably uh, massage that a little bit if I had a little bit more headroom, but the onset detector just... So you do have to be a little bit careful about what you're playing before you re-trigger. But I think it does a pretty good job of producing that, you know, um, note for note retriggering uh, volume swell. So that's Polyoctavius um, or Polyoctavus. I don't know how to pronounce my patch's name, but uh, I hope you enjoy it. Um, check it out. You know, it can do a bunch of different things if you change the levels of the octaves.